Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to Azure Data Factory video series part 5. So in this section, we will be exploring more on what is a pipeline and what is activity, what are the types of activities. So the main stretch would be on the different types of the pipeline activities we have. I know that in section 1, we have discussed in a very high level about pipelines, activities, data sets, linked services, integration runtimes and also triggers because they are like the top level concepts and top level components. I think it's in section 2. Yeah. And in section 3, we have also created our first pipeline and we've seen a uh, pipeline and also like different types of different activities, of course. But we haven't discussed about the different types of activities. So when it comes to Azure ADF, you have activities and you also have types of activities. It's similar to you have integration runtimes and you also have three different types of integration runtimes. So mainly this is uh, the theory which you need to understand because if you, if you know what are the different types of activities you have, then you understand, okay, which type of activity I need to use for my requirements, right? Okay, so without any further ado, uh, let's get into the concept. So basically pipeline and activities. So uh, I know that you've already seen this definition, but again, just for the folks who haven't gone through previous videos, I'm just repeating the same thing here. So data factory might have one or more pipelines. So basically data factory, is nothing but you create data pipeline. So basically this is what we are talking here. A pipeline is, a data factory could have one or more pipelines, right? So basically you create the data pipeline. And the pipeline is a logical grouping of activities. So then what is pipeline? A pipeline is basically the group of activities. It's a logical group of activities that performs the unit of work. Unit of work could be anything. It could be copy data from one location to other location or do some data transformation, do, do some data cleaning, apply some uh, expressions, apply some formulas, add some business rules. Uh, unit of work could be anything which you perform on the data. Basically you use pipelines, you create pipelines. Pipeline is a logical group of activities. Basically they perform the work. So together the activities in a pipeline perform a task basically. Together, the activities in a pipeline perform a task. Okay, so there is a basic example. Uh, we will not see that example. It's uh, from the documentation. And uh, let's try to understand activities. So activities represent a processing step in a pipeline. So this is important. So basically, the processing step in a pipeline is represented by the activities. We will look into that. For example, you might use a copy activity to copy data from one data store to another data store. So basically, the copy activity is doing the copy job, right? The copy functionality so you're copying something from one location to another location using a copy activity so you create a pipeline maybe copy data pipeline and within that pipeline use the activity called copy activity basically it does the job so you need to understand the main difference between a pipeline and an activity okay then so basically this this flow should help you to understand that okay so you create a pipeline which is a logical group of an activity and basically this activity actually communicates with the data set. So either you produce a data set right to the sync or to the destination or you consume the data set from the source to make some transformations. OK, so we've seen uh, how to create a data set like basically data set is um, is uh, referring either to a table or to the file. And you also know what is the difference between data set and linked service. If you do not know that, I would highly recommend you to go and look into uh, video series part two where I have explained the top components and there you have data set and link service. So if you try to understand the flow, so basically what you do is you create a pipeline and then within the pipeline you bring an activity and basically that activity does the actual action here. That is very important here to understand. Okay, so then what are the different types of activities we have? So basically this is what I wanted to explain in this section. So there are mainly three types of activities, data movement activities, data transformation activities and control flow activities. OK, so we will try to see where we have them in the Azure ADF instance. Before going there, I have a very nice documentation. Um, not I have a documentation. It's basically provided by the Microsoft. So they have very nice documentations. When I say nice, all the information is in detail few of the information are also in simple terms for everyone to understand, right? So if you come to this section here, so this is the URL, okay? And within this URL, you have pipelines and activities in Azure Data Factory and Azure Synapse Analytics. So don't get confused with uh, what is the Synapse Analytics. Basically, this is one of 
the service within Azure. Uh, basically, it's a combination of both transformation and storage. So it's it's like a cloud data warehouse, I could say, but it has more features and functionalities. We will try to explore that in coming sessions, but let's try to only focus on Azure Data Factory. Okay, so pipelines and activities in Azure Data Factory. If I scroll up, basically there is this diagram which we've seen, and then you have data movement activities. So what is data movement activities or what are data movement activities? So here, if you see copy activity in Azure Data Factory, copies data from various sources and also to various things. So basically here you have a big list of data stores within Azure where the copy activity is supported. Okay, so basically the copy activity within the ADF is mainly used for data movement activities. And here you can see uh, whether it is supported as source or not, you have a very big list of data stores and then whether it is supported as sync or not. And it is also supported by Azure integration runtime. We have seen what is integration runtime or the different types of integration runtimes in the previous section, which is part four. Yeah. And also you have whether it is supported by self-hosted integration runtime or not. Okay. So you have a very big list here. You can just go through them. You can also see these are categorized by Azure and then by databases and also by NoSQL file and everything. Uh, important key point here is data movement activity, mainly the copy activities used for the data movement activities. Then you have data transformation activities. So data transformation activities. So basically you transform the data. So to do that, you have a different list here. So you have a data flow. We will see what is data flow. And then you have, uh, here you can see what is a compute environment. Basically the data flow will get executed in the Apache Spark clusters. We will get into that. So I have very big playlist on a data flow and mapping data flow where we will try to understand them and use them for data transformation related works. Then you have Azure functions, Hive, Pig, you know, MapReduce, all these are related to big data. Right, and you can also see the computer environment underlying there. And then you have some custom activity data bricks. So basically these are all used based on the requirement, based on the use case for data transformation. And then you have control flows. Okay, so control flow activities are something like for each filter and if else condition pending or executing a pipeline and look up adding a variable and like a switch until activity, validation activity, wait or webhook. So basically these are control flows, okay? Three types, data movement, data transformation and control flow. And we have seen those three different types there. And if I go back to our ADF instance, just to see here. So when you try to click on create a pipeline, new pipeline, okay, for example, and then if I close here, then you have a big list of activities here. So the move and transform here, you see data copy is under the move. Okay, and transform you also have a data flow and then you also have data explorer Azure function. Basically few of them are used for data transformation. And then when you come to general, then you have a few options here, few activities here, basically which are used for control flow activities, right? We have seen them control flow activities. And then you also have iteration and conditionals. These are also used for control flow each for each if condition switch until and filter. And then basically you have HD insight, Azure function, data bricks, data lakes. These are used for data transformations and move and transform. You have a copy and data, flow, right? So this is all about different types of different types of activities and what are they uh, and uh, when to use what uh, again, moving forward, we will look into them in detail, how to use them, when to use them. But I hope you like this section. So uh, if you think if you've gained any knowledge uh, out of this video, I would kindly request you to subscribe uh, our channel, uh, which gives a lot of motivation and encouragement to make more these kind of videos. Our motto is very simple. Uh, keep learning and sharing, and I hope to have a good day. Thank you so much.